my Trillions, welcome, welcome back to my channel. So for this week's video, we are going to do something that one of you guys actually asked for and I thought it was a really good idea. So here we are. After a whole lot of care videos for these guys, we are now gonna talk about why you shouldn't get a bearded dragon. This video is sponsored by the Dubia Dude, so make sure to stay until the end of this video to find out how you can save 10% off of your purchase at thedubiadude.com. This video is not necessarily meant to deter you from getting one. It's just kind of a bunch of reasons why maybe it isn't the right animal for you. And I just thought this was a cool idea and it was a cool take or twist or whatever on videos that I normally do all the time on Bearded Dragons. So without further ado, let's get into that. The first reason and a huge reason for so many people is money. Bearded dragons are expensive, especially baby bearded dragons. And especially when you very first get that bearded dragon and you are having to do an entire setup for them, they can be very expensive. I have done a whole series of videos about how much animals cost that I will leave here. But bearded dragons are very expensive and even if you have enough money to get them all started, you do have to take into consideration how much they're going to cost over time. So how much feeding them is going to cost. You do have to replace those UV lights every six months. If heat lights blow out, you have to replace those. If you're going to use things like carpet, you do have to replace that regularly. So you have to take into consideration all of those different costs, but just make sure that you are financially prepared. If you are a younger person, maybe you are, I don't know, 13, 14 years old and you're about to get your first pet, make sure that whoever is going to be financially responsible for this animal understands how much it's going to cost. But yeah, money is a huge one and these guys live for eight to 10 years at least. So that is a very long time that you're going to have to buy bugs for them, that you're going to have to buy greens for them and replace those lights and all of that. And on that same topic of money, vet visits. First of all, vet visits can be expensive. Like I've said in lots of other videos, bearded dragons are prone to getting parasites. And what that means for you is that you will probably have to regularly have them tested for parasites, especially if they start acting like they're sick. So if they start getting sluggish or they're not wanting to eat or they're about to go into formation, there's a lot of reasons that you would have to have them tested for parasites. So if you take them to the vet, you're not only gonna have to pay for that fecal parasite test, but you're also gonna have to pay for the office visit and for any medications that may be needed to treat them and usually after they give those medications they do want to see your animal back and sometimes that costs money as well and make sure that you are going to be able to take your animal into the vet. Another really big thing with vet visits is that not everywhere has exotic vets so for the most part most vets that see any kind of animals are able to do fecal parasite exams because I'm not a vet but I'm assuming it is the same procedure to test a cat for parasites as it is a bearded dragon. Anything beyond that, you need to see an exotic vet. So exotic vets are trained in exotic animals as opposed to just dogs and cats. Reptiles are gonna be a lot different from mammals, so they have to be trained accordingly. The best thing that I could advise on this is before you get your animal, call around to local veterinarians and ask if they have a reptile special specialist on staff. Even if you get your animal and they're in perfect health, accidents happen. Your animal might end up getting bit by a bug and getting an infection or, I don't know, breaking a nail and then getting infected. Anything can happen and you need to be prepared for that. Call around. I know I now have to travel an hour and a half to get to an exotic specialist. And an hour and a half is not at all unheard of and it's actually pretty common to have to travel that far. So yeah, if you don't have access to someone that specializes in reptiles, a bearded dragon might not be the animal for you not having enough time for them. This is what I see on almost every single Craigslist ad where they are rehoming their bearded dragon. It is always them saying that they just don't have time for their bearded dragon anymore. And unfortunately, this is a very common thing. You are obviously not gonna be able to plan for the future. You don't know if in 
five years, you're gonna have a job where you are working 60 hours a week. You obviously can't prepare to that extent. Looking at your situation now and kind of looking at what you want to do in the next 10 years will help with this. If you know that you are a super busy person and there is no way in there that you can make time for your animal, then a bearded dragon isn't gonna be the best for you. Bearded dragons are very time consuming. They have to be fed as babies multiple times a day. Most of them need to be either bathed or misted on the nose every day so that they can eat. You have to prepare fresh salads for them. You have to feed them bugs. You have to clean their tanks. Most of them seem to really enjoy being held. They like to get out of their tanks. Some of them like to be outside. Some of them like to walk around in the floor. And if you don't have time to do that, you are going to very quickly feel guilty when your bearded dragon is glass surfing because they want out of their tank and you don't have time to do that. If you plan to go off to college where you can't take your animal. If you, I don't know, plan to join the military, anything like that, that is something that you need to keep in mind because those are places that you cannot take this animal. Again, that is something that you need to plan for. I am someone that is very, very busy. I stay busy most of the time, but I am still able to make time for all my animals. And that was something that I had to consider when I got my animals. And it is something that I still have to consider every time I even think about getting new animals. Am I going to have time for this animal? So, so if you don't have the time for your animal or if you know that you are moving away in two years, then you probably shouldn't get a bearded dragon space requirements. So this isn't going to apply to a lot of people, but it is going to apply to people that may live in smaller apartments or in housing where bearded dragons and reptiles aren't allowed because that is a thing. Having the space for these animals is crucial. So you can't just buy a 20 gallon tank and expect that to last forever. They are going to need bigger tanks. A 40 gallon breeder is minimum for these guys, but they will use more space if you give it to them. So make sure that you are able to provide space for them. So if you don't have room in your house, then a bearded dragon is not going to be the proper pet for you. Having an animal in a temporary tank while they are a baby is perfectly okay. It's actually pretty beneficial to them most of the time because smaller animals in huge tanks can sometimes scare them. But if you are going to do that, make sure that you are going to be able to provide a bigger tank for them eventually because they will need it. If you are planning to buy a bearded dragon, keep them in a tiny tank forever. Please don't get a bearded dragon. It is not the animal for you. Next up, we have not wanting a bearded dragon, which you may be thinking, duh, if you don't want a bearded dragon, of course you shouldn't get a bearded dragon. But this is unfortunately something that happens. So people look for the best starter pet, the best beginner pets, which looking for beginner reptiles is perfectly okay, but settling for beginner reptile isn't. And what I mean by that is if you love reptiles and you're just looking for something easy, then 100% look into animals that are best for beginners. But if you're just settling for a bearded dragon because you want something more difficult in the future, that's not going to be the best for you because you're going to get tired of that animal. Bearded dragons can be very finicky and having to deal with something that you didn't want in the first place can very quickly get old and it always leads to people rehoming those bearded dragons. So just make sure that you 100% know that you want a bearded dragon when you get one and you're not settling. And if that is you, if you are in that boat and you are thinking about settling for a bearded dragon, any reptile can be a beginner reptile if you are willing to put in the time and resources and research to take care of them. If you are prepared for that animal and you know what goes into them, you know their setups and what they eat and the lighting and all that, most reptiles can be beginner reptiles if you put in the effort. So don't ever think that you need to settle for an animal that you don't don't want because again it's just going to end up in that animal ending up on Craigslist or being rehomed or you just really regretting your decision so make sure that this is something that you really want before you dive into it. And on that same note, not wanting to research is a huge reason why maybe a bearded dragon isn't the best for you. Bearded dragon care is pretty simple once you get into a routine, but leading up to that, it can be very difficult. You have to learn the proper setups and lightings and supplements and what to feed and what not to feed and get yourself on a routine of feeding those animals. And it can be very overwhelming at first, but if you're not willing to put in the research and to 
look up when you have questions and to sometimes take advice from people, it's not going to be the animal for you. Not doing research easily can result in metabolic bone disease. It can result in vet visits for your animal. It can even result in dying animals from people not checking to see what they should do in certain situations. So if you don't want to take the time to research these animals, that is a huge reason why you shouldn't get a bearded dragon. But honestly, if you're watching this video, most likely that's what you do is you research animals before you get them, not wanting to feed live bugs. So this is a big one because a lot of people are scared of live bugs. However, bearded dragons need to be fed live bugs so that they can thrive. In the wild, they are eating live bugs. They don't have freeze-dried bugs to eat. Dried bugs are essentially nothing but shell. Where a live bug has been eating and it's been consuming nutrients through fresh greens or calcium cricket food or whatever, they are receiving nutrients. They are healthy. They are living. But when you take one of those insects and you dry it out, they become essentially a shell and it is basically like living your life on popcorn. It's not giving them the proper nutrients that they need to survive. If you are afraid of bugs, I'm not saying that you shouldn't get a bearded dragon. A lot of people are scared of bugs and feed their bearded dragon. Or maybe you just don't want them escaping into your house. There are things that you can do if you just don't want them to escape into your house. You can feed things like silkworms, phoenix worms, super worms, occasionally wax worms as treats. They love horn worms. Worms aren't going to be as likely to escape into your house and, I don't know, crawl on you or whatever. So going that route may help and it may also help people that are afraid of bugs. And also feeding in separate bins is going to help with that. So if you have watched my previous videos, you guys know that my husband hates doobie roaches and he will not touch them. You're not gonna touch them? Oh, I'm not gonna touch them. <laughs> Every time I touch them, they touch me. Well, yeah, that's usually, <laughs> that's usually that's that an works. issue, okay? <laughs> so what he does when he has to feed Zaz is he takes a big Sterilite bin, he takes the roaches out of the container holding the egg carton and just shakes them in there and it puts some supplements, calcium, vitamins, whatever it is that day into the bin with the roaches, shakes them around and sticks her in there and he never has to touch those bugs and that is how he gets through hating those dubia roaches. There's ways around it, but if you are a person who just flat out does not want any live bugs in your house or you are just terrified of live bugs and you don't want anything to do with them, then unfortunately you shouldn't get a bearded dragon unless you can find a way around that. And that is about all I can think of for reasons that you should not get a bearded dragon. I'm sure there are so many more, but that's all I can think of at this moment. This is not meant to be a controversial topic. I just thought it would be kind of cool to present bearded dragon information in a different way. Like I said, one of you guys suggested this and I thought it was a really cool video idea. If you've watched this whole video and none of those things seem to be a problem for you, then a bearded dragon might just be the animal for you. They are awesome lizards to have have to watch to hang out with they are super cool and if that is something that you really want then a hundred percent yes do it go for it as i said in the beginning of this video this video is sponsored by the dubia dude the dubia dude.com is an awesome place to get feeder roaches for your bearded dragon or whatever reptile you may have my bearded dragon absolutely loves dubia roaches they are one of her favorite foods they are her staple food she loves them dubia roaches are not only loved by bearded dragons but they are super nutritious they have more protein than crickets they're easier to keep than crickets they don't smell as bad as crickets crickets die off really fast and dubia roaches tend to stick around they tend to stick it out longer and you'll also have to feed your babies less dubia roaches than you would crickets so that is really awesome as well make sure to head on over to the dubiedude.com and when you place that order use my code l for 10 percent off of that order and you will have roaches delivered directly to your house thank you so much to the dubiedude.com for for sponsoring this video. As always, if you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put a new video, which is every Sunday. Thank you so much to Dylan Quayle for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole lot of stuff. Thank you so much, Dylan. You are the beast. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.